This wedding was an assignment for my Religion 2 class in Catholic school. This one's wife. Just where is she from? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. This one's wife appears to be struggling with where she is from. When she first came to the attention of most of the world, which was because she married a dim-witted ginger prince, many people looked and thought, okay, yeah, she's an American lady, divorced. Right. Hmm. Possibly there's a bit of Hispanic looks about her. Oh, what's that? She's a person of colour. Didn't realise. Right. Okay. But she's American, yes? Yeah, yeah. She's from the United States of America. Right. Okay. According to information about her, she was born at West Park Hospital in Canoga Park, Los Angeles, California. That means that she was born in the United States. She's a citizen of the United States. Right. So... That's where she's from. But what about her mother? Well, her mother, as we know, is Doria Ragland. She was born in Cleveland, Ohio, which then makes her also from the United States. Apparently, records state that the Ragland family descend from Richard Dick Ragland, who was born into slavery around 1792 in Chatham County, North Carolina. His son, Stephen Ragland, 1848 to 1926, lived in Georgia. Thus, they were both born in the United States. So the ancestors of Doria Ragland and the ancestors of this one's wife were born in the United States. Going further back, there's evidence that Richard Ragland's father was Benner Ragland, who was from the Fante tribe in West Africa, which lived in the area surrounding the Niger River, including today's Ghana and Ivory Coast. The family's Ragland surname came from slave owner William Ragland, a Methodist planter and land speculator who had emigrated during the 18th century from Cornwall, England, to North America. Thus, it would appear that there are Ghanaian and Ivory Coast roots on the Ragland side of the family. And then descendants were all born in the United States. What about this one's wife's father, Thomas Markle? Well, he was born and raised in Newport, Pennsylvania. So he is a U.S. citizen also. His mother's family was from New Hampshire, also the United States. And the Markle, formerly spelled Merkel, family on his father's side, claims ethnic German 18th century origins from the Alsatian town of Lamterschlock, now part of France but hitherto was German origins. Among his distant ancestors are his paternal great-great-grandmother, New Hampshire landowner, Mary Hussey Smith. He also descends from Sir Philip Wentworth and Mary Clifford, a daughter of John Clifford, 7th Baron Clifford, and Lady Elizabeth Percy, a descendant of Edward III. Accordingly, what have we got from all of this so far? This one's wife was born in the United States. Her mother was born in the United States. Her father was born in the United States. That solidly makes her American. On her father's side, there's some German. On her mother's side, there appears to be links to Ghana and the Ivory Coast, going back some distance, several hundred years. Thus, that's what we've got in the mix. Clear American citizens, born in the United States, but from ancestry, a bit of German thrown in there, and some Ghanaian and Ivory Coast. 
Now, back in March 2015, this one's wife wrote on The Tig, her lifestyle blog, that Malta was the land from which her great-grandmother hailed. In actual fact, she wrote that it was... When asked to go to Malta to not only discover the beautiful island, but also the land from which my great-grandmother hailed, I said, yes, without hesitation. It's Malta. She went on to explain that it felt like home. She also explained that coming to Malta has been really important to me because my great-great-grandmother lived here. So we've been trying to trace the ancestry. The trip was mostly about trying to understand where I come from, my identity. There is something so lovely about fitting in a piece of the puzzle. To come somewhere where you so quickly settle into feeling welcomed is really special. It is this Maltese hospitality that is really special to the place. Before I came, people were telling me, when you go to Malta, everyone will look like you. And I started to say, oh my gosh, I do sort of blend in. And it's the loveliest feeling. Thus, back in 2015, this one's wife deemed that Malta felt like home, that she looked like the people there, that she blended in, that she wore the traditional Gonella headdress, pictures of which you've probably seen. Thus, Malta felt like home. In 2019, this one's wife, when as a working royal back then, went on a royal tour of South Africa, and she told teenage girls, in a deprived part of South Africa, she is with them as a woman of colour, and as your sister. Right. Okay. She said, on just one personal note, may I just say that while I'm here with my husband as a member of the royal family, I'm here with you as a mother, as a wife, as a woman, as a woman of colour, and as your sister. Thus, she's telling us that she has some kind of link with South Africa, that maybe she's somehow from there because she's a sister to them. As you know, this one's wife then declared that she was 43% Nigerian and, on the recent pseudo-royal tour, has thanked Nigeria for welcoming me home. She wrote, with gratitude for the support of the Invictus community and for welcoming me home, in a visitor's book at the Defence Headquarters in the heart of Abuja. Accordingly, we have a lady that was born in the United States, whose father was born in the United States, whose mother was born in the United States, who their immediate ancestors were born in the United States, although further back in the annals of time, there are links to Germany, Ghana, and the Ivory Coast. Yet, this one's wife claims an affinity with Malta, being like home, that she's a sister to South Africa, and that she's 43% Nigerian, and Nigeria has welcomed her home. Goodness me, this woman hasn't a clue, has she, as to where home actually is. Now, of course, we've not been shown anything that confirms this supposed genealogy test that details that she's 43% Nigerian. And many people have questioned that given the fact that you have a white father and a half-black mother, how is it that you could even be 43% Nigerian? Furthermore, people have pointed out that Nigeria is a nation as opposed to an ethnicity, and that there are lots of tribes, and that if you did a genealogy test, it would be more likely to tell you the tribes that you were linked to, rather than saying that you were Nigerian, which again causes people to think that this whole 43% Nigerian is a load of made-up nonsense, as this one's wife attempts to play the race card once again. But she evidently isn't sure where she comes from. Now, naturally, you can be a citizen of one country and have an ancestry that comes from other countries, thus to say, well, you're actually from the United States, but of course further back, 
you can point to, and it's often the case with many people in the United States because other than those that are First Nation, it is a country that's built upon immigrants. People have come there from all around the world. So many people who were born in the United States can trace ancestors back to the United Kingdom, to Ireland, many to Germany. There's a lot of Germans that went there, Norwegians, and then more into the south, French, Spanish, etc. But with this one's wife, what's entertaining is that she puts herself out there on CVs and resume as a white woman, that she's American. Then she's Maltese, that Malta feels like home. And then all of a sudden, she's a sister to South Africa. And then Nigeria is actually home, even though the genealogy would appear on her mother's side points to Ghana and Ivory Coast, and not Nigeria. Why is she so confused about where she comes from? Why does she talk about being a sister to this place and this place feeling like home? Once again, the answer is her narcissism. She is a chameleon. She has no stable core of who she is. Although she doesn't realise she does this because she operates in the moment and her narcissism deletes and adjusts history as it goes along, she tries to be all things to all people. Narcissists commonly mirror those around them in order to fit in, and it aids us with regard to the assertion of control and drawing a fuel over people. Human beings mirror repeatedly. It's part of the greasing of the social wheels of interaction. And, of course, you've heard the adage, birds of a feather flock together. Thus, for social stability, cooperation, and a more meaningful existence, it is natural to mirror to some extent. But the narcissist mirrors for nefarious reasons, for that ulterior motive, the narcissist's agenda of seeking the prime aims. Although she doesn't realise she's doing it, because she's governed by that background app that is the narcissism, she will glow about being a United States citizen, then talk about how Malta feels like home, then how she's a sister in South Africa, and then actually she's 43% Nigeria, thank you for welcoming me home, because her narcissism causes her to flit between these different personas in the same way that one week she's an author, the next she's a politician, then she's a content creator, then she's a podcaster, then she's a bananatarian, then she's a philanthropist, then she's a fashion icon. The narcissism commands her to be whatever she needs to be in order to get to those prime aims. Therefore, if the narcissism deems that she needs to play that race card by saying, I'm 43% Nigerian, even though there's no evidence of that, it causes her to believe that that's true. So she spouts this fabrication. It causes her to talk about I'm coming home, even though she's not from Nigeria. She wasn't born there. None of her immediate relatives are from there. In fact, it would appear on her mother's side that they're more likely to be from Ghana or the Ivory Coast. Accordingly, this again is driven by the chameleon nature of her narcissism, the necessity of looking to fit in with people, to control them, to make them feel special, to suggest, hey, I'm like you. It's wonderful to be home. It wouldn't surprise me that you'd find that next, that this one's wife decides that she's going to go to Latin America because she suddenly finds out that she's Venezuelan. She doesn't see the incongruity of what she's saying. You can't be home in lots of different places. But she doesn't see that. Because when she's talking about being a United States citizen, that's all that matters. When she talks about being a sister to South Africa, that's all that matters. When she talks about Malta feeling like home, that's all that matters. When she talks about Nigeria welcoming her home, that's all that matters. She doesn't stand there and think, oh, a few years ago I said that Malta felt like home. Oh, well, no, nobody, nobody will remember. Oh, I gave it big licks with the South Africans to make it seem like I was a sister to them, as if I had some connection with the country. South Africa won't be too troubled. After all, they did come out singing and dancing in the streets when I got married, just like they did when Nelson Mandela was freed from prison. So they're still going to love me. 
It doesn't occur to her. Her own lies and revisions of history are not replayed to her in her own mind because the narcissism just maintains a constant narrative that suits at the moment. It's outside of that, namely the likes of you and I and the media that point out all of these inconsistencies. If you were to point this out to her, she would come up with some word salad to try and explain it, possibly deny that she ever issued such a comment, that you've misinterpreted her words, that you've misunderstood what she was saying, i.e. it's your fault and not hers. But the fact is, this one's wife will claim to be from wherever it is in the world, depend on who she's dealing with, because her narcissism will demand that that's the case. This is something that's seen before with other narcissists. Take, for example, Hilaria Hillary Baldwin, who claimed to be Spanish to the extent that she affected a Spanish accent, changed her name. In actual fact, she isn't from Spain. But her narcissism caused her to do so as an affectation because of the chameleon nature of her narcissism again to get to the prime aims. Thus, this one's wife claims to have sistership, that she claims that certain places feel like home, because her narcissism demands it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.